Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Today we're going to talk about a topic that has kind of been brewing in the back of my mind for a while now. I'm really curious to get your thoughts on this as well. And it's all about power creep inside Raid Shadow Legends, something that we've been talking about for, I don't know, like six months now here on the channel when they release all of these new and, and frankly amazing epic champions into the game, new really incredible legendary champions into the game. It's great, right? Right? These are great champions. It's fun to have new champions added to the game. At least I enjoy it. However, with that said, something behind the scenes kind of happens as well, right? And what happens is, is all of the rare champions, I looked back a year ago, I was actually, this video started with where I was going to make kind of a an updated for 2021 rare tier list. And then the more I was looking, the more, you know, for me, the, the, the litmus test is, Am I going to upgrade these champions if I pull them on my free to play account, which is, you know, three or four months old? And very, very sad to announce. Oh, sh Here we go again. That a lot of these champions that used to be on my top 20 rare lists just aren't even worth it, even on my free to play account anymore. Why is this a bad thing? It's a bad thing because they haven't added a bunch of new ways to farm resources inside the game and rare champions inherently are so much cheaper to invest in, right? So let me try to make that more clear. Rare champions are good. When there's a lot of good rare champions in the game, it makes the game a more pleasant experience for everybody, right? Because you can invest in, in an uncommon or a rare champion and not feel like really intensive resources and grinding that has to go into it. Now I'm looking here and there's not that, a lot of the rares that I used to, you know, advocate people invest in maybe a year and a half, two years ago. Now I look at it and I'm like, wow, you know what? Between daily log and reward champions, which is great, but a lot of them are legendary and epic that are good, right? High Katoon, Dark Elhane, uh, Grush the Mangler, Vizix the Unbowed, and Sill of the Drakes. I mean, they're more resource intensive. Again, I like that there's good daily log and reward champions, but those champions are better than a lot of rares. Most of rares, all of the rares in some cases in this game, maybe you could argue one or two. There are still like two or three rares at the top of the game, right? Two or three rares that I recommend basically anybody max out. And it's still the same old, same old. Apothecary, yes, he's great. Reliquary Tender, yes, she's fantastic. And me personally, the third is Coltart. But for me, that's really it in terms of the top, top, top tier. Three rares that everybody should be maxing out. I guess even Apothecary, you can make the case, or even Reliquary Tender, you can make the case that if you're a huge spender, you don't need those two champions. But generally speaking, 95, 99% of the people watching right now, these are three rares that are awesome. But you know, all three of these rares have something in common. They're all old school champions, man. They have really, really, really been reluctant to add compelling new rares to the game with only a few minor exceptions. So who are the best rare champions added to the game that I would invest in on my free to play account in the last year? Well, the list is very short. In, in Frozen Banshee might actually be over a year old now. I, I don't know. But Frozen Banshee, if you want poison sensitivity, I, dude, this is crazy to say, but if I pulled her on my free to play, I might not even invest, you know? Because meta and clan boss has shifted to unkillable, unkillable, unkillable. Frozen Banshee is not bad. When she was added to the game, she was a beast because she was the first poison sensitivity champion inside the game. Now there's quite a few more, and the, the clan meta has, the clan boss meta has kind of evolved. She's not awful. She definitely can easily make the case that she is worth investing in. I'm not trying to, you know, the slam Frozen Banshee. But Frozen Banshee, really, there's only three rares they've added that, that are even close to decent. Dagger is solid. She has a 75% chance on a three-turn cooldown of placing a, uh, a decreased defense. But think about it. They've added like 20 decreased defense champions in the last six months to this game. They've really power crept decreased defense to, to the point where, uh, you know, I still advocate brand new players go in and pick up War Maiden, right? Because she does have the defense breaker on a three turn cooldown. But, uh, oops, over here. But the thing is, is she scales, you scale beyond her really quickly. You know, you can't use War Maiden in end game content anymore. Certainly not level 24 dungeons, at least. I mean, I'm sure you could, right? If you have a really, really great artifacts and an amazing team around her, anything, you can do anything, right? 
because people can farm with a fifth champion. However, there are so many kind of accessible better options. But the thing is, again, I want to stress this. They all cost so much more to upgrade, right? So it's a weird power creep dynamic where the rares are kind of being left behind and why that's bad is it'd be cool, honestly, if they added a bunch of really compelling epic and legendary champions to the game and gave us that silver dungeon, that new asset, you know, I mean, we've been waiting for this dungeon. I mean, for a while now, I'm hoping it comes soon. We're still supposed to have this new dungeon coming, uh, I don't know, in a few months, I think, from the Cirilla interview. So this is going to be a new way to ascend your champions. I'm thinking maybe a different color star after you normally ascend them. You ascend them more or something like that. But this is going to be a new way to upgrade your champion in multiple different areas was the direct quote or multiple different ways was the direct quote of what this is, this dungeon here. So that's going to be added this year. Uh, but it doesn't sound like, it sounds like it's going to be an additional way to further upgrade all of your champions not a way to help you do it faster I hope you're hungry for nothing now potion keeps did have a huge improvement with the new levels so I will give them that so it's a little bit easier to ascend but it's still re resource intensive uh, 16 energy on a level 20 uh you know arcane keep it's still worth it to do that but it's still costing you a lot. So what needs to change here? What needs to change? Well, two things can change, right? And then I want to go through the only 10 champions I would even consider rare to max out on my on my free-to-play account, okay? Let alone my main account. My main account, I'm really only interested in Reliquary Tender and Coltar on this account, my main, right? But of course, I lean on Apothecary a lot on my free-to-play, and I'm sure a lot of people do. He's a great champion. Uh, so let's provide the solutions first. And then I'll give you my 10 champions, the only ones I would even consider outside of the starting champions, okay? Obviously, Kale's great for a starting champion and stuff like that, right? Uh, so, what can they do? What can they do to fix this situation? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, two things. Number one is, if this game is going away from uncommons, we still have Armagur and Shield Guard, that's pretty much it, right? Uh, you know, whatever. I, I would love them to for, to for them to add another compelling uncommon champion, but whatever. But either release a lot more serviceable, AKA really investable rare champions, right? I'm looking for a few more, I mean, listen, why does there only have to be Kale, Apothecary, Coltar, you know, Reliquary Tender that were, you know, champions that have mostly been here since the beginning of the game? Why not add, you know, a few more of these a year? I'm not asking for hundreds or dozens of these champions, just a few, like another Coltar-esque champion that people, free-to-play uh, players or players who just are not dropping hundreds and hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars into this game people that can invest in those champions and still have a very serviceable option, even if they're only god tier in one or two areas of the game. I think for a rare champion, listen, they're not legendary. They're not supposed to be, you know, an amazing, amazing game-changing champion in this game. However, that doesn't mean that they all have to be absolute crap either, you know? They can be very good, kind of like Coltart, in one area of the game. Well, she's good in a bunch of areas, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like a Frozen Banshee type, right? Make her a specialist, but why don't they release more of those champions? That way it's not as resource intensive. That's solution number one, and that's what I prefer. Just add some more uncommon and rare champions, not a ton of them, but add some more to the game. It's going to make the player base a lot more more satisfied, a lot more content. It's going to keep them playing the game. It's going to keep them spending in the game. Keep them spending in the game. Keep them spending in the game. Again, we talk about this a lot on the channel, but I think this would be a long-term win for Plarium by adding more compelling, accessible, low rarity champions so they're not so intensive to book out with epic books there's still no way to farm books this is ridiculous i love this game by the way and if you don't love this game if it really aggravates you and you hate it then stop playing the game man you know what i'm saying uh, i love the game but that's a huge problem in the game and i've said it so many times i'm gonna be really quick with it but why in 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 the world why is there a way that's necessary to upgrade every champion book skill tomes and no way to get them in the game, you know, other than special events and, you know, milestone type rewards, you know, 
There's no farmable way. Advanced Quest, sure, I can get one book every month. Bazaar, maybe a book every month and a half or whatever, you know? If you're grinding 3v3 Arena for 12 hours a day, you know what I'm saying? So that doesn't make any sense. We need book farming. We need that. Over the last week, I realized that I, I miss you. And I need you. At least with rares and uncommons, you can use duplicates that are a little bit more accessible. Anyway, I digress there. The other option is, again, just give us a lot more. Uh, give us a way to farm epic books, legendary books, and more silver because it, it's going to cost more, right? More energy. Uh, give us more resources to invest. If you want to push this game in the direction of only epics and legendaries are eventually going to be viable due to power creep, you just got to give us a little bit more resources to, you know, make that happen. Otherwise, you're boxing out maybe 50% of the player base who's not going to have the resources nor the time to invest to, to upgrade those champions, those great champions that you're adding to the game. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you, <laughs> we don't care. It, it, what solution would you prefer? Maybe a little bit of both? Can we be that greedy to ask? So I already talked about Dagger. I would consider Dagger, she's, she's uh, you know, affinity neutral, so she's got that going for her. Uh, Apothecary, we already talked about. I'm not going to include, again, the starting champions, Relic Tender. War Maiden in the beginning. Uh, Bellower, obviously, I would consider. I mean, the thing is, Bellower is a great champion, especially in a stun set for progression. But I have him on my free-to-play, and I haven't invested in him yet because I have a bunch of epics and now legendary champions that I can't upgrade that I'm focused on. I, I need to go back to Bellower, obviously, and I will. But, yeah, Bellower is great still, okay? Shut up, Ash. Just Bellower is great. Frozen Banshee, we already talked about. For only for unkillable teams, only for unkillable teams... I will upgrade Painkeeper uh, because of her combat tactics. Uh, but again, that's only for a niche, niche role and uh, for Clan Boss, essentially. I have her on my free to play and I don't use her. I don't use her in Clan Boss. I don't have the champions yet uh, built up yet. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to use her just for dungeons. It's not worth it for me. Uh, so that's Painkeeper. Same thing for. Uh, Renegade, right? So for kind of niche teams, it's it's ironic in a way, but people who are using Renegade, rarely are they using her in the early game where people are going to want to invest in rare champions. It's more like unkillable teams or, you know, synergizing with Seer teams, stuff like that, right? With a sacrifice ritual ability. But Renegade definitely is on my list of 10 rares I would consider investing in, right? Coltart we already talked about, and then there's only two, only one more, right? I did Painkeeper, Frozen Banshee, Bellower, Roar Maiden, uh, Reliquary, Apothecary, Dagger, and I really still like this dude, guys. I still think that, uh, why, oh, I'm looking at the epics, I'm like, where is he? Uh, Kazar Depart, I still think he's a solid champion, he can put out a lot of damage, he doesn't scale very well, because he's so, he's like a glass cannon and a half, 870 defense, 12k HP, that's the problem, right, he's a compelling champion, maybe for the arena, but even if you invest in him, even if I pulled him on my free-to-play, is he worth it, you know? And where am I going to be using this dude? But I would at least consider it because he has decreased speed on the A1, which I really, really like. Decreased speed is a very important ability to have. He has an AoE with, with a critical hit turn meter fill on a three-turn. Then he has a three-turn here with increased accuracy and decreased uh, defense, the small version, but still, it's a great ability to have. So I do think, especially increased accuracy in the early and the mid-game, it goes a long way so i actually do stand by kazar deep heart being uh one of the him and frozen banshee really the two best and dagger the three best rares added in the last year and a half or so in the game right the best expansion rare champions so guys let me know do you read does this resonate with you am i on base here with your experience in the game do you think it'd be better for the overall player base and again here i'm not being unrealistic i'm not just asking for the world I just think it's overall better for the health of the game as well, right? And the whole player base as a whole. Guys, let me know what you think. And if I forgot any rare champion, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, guys.